we're quite small here, we're 720 acres, yeah. about 450 in arable on a five-year rotation in blocks of roughly 90 acres. And then we've got about 90 acres of woodland and about 150 acres of grass. The rotation is potatoes, wheat, rape, wheat, and then we have a, a, a spring crop, barley or, or, or oats, and then back to potatoes in the fifth year. Yeah. So that gives opportunities for two overwintered stubbles. Yeah. The soil is a Ross Selak series, sandy soil. It's got a very low clay fraction, quite a high sand fraction, and the silt coming in just below it. It's been in continuous arable production for probably in excess of 40 years, just solidly arable, 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 with potatoes every fifth year in the rotation. Yeah. And it was getting to the stage where it was so weak, it couldn't hold water, it, in my opinion, wasn't holding on to the fertilizer, and everything was just either running straight off because we were getting capping problems and plow pan problems, or just leaching straight down through. Yeah. Well, what we change to try and get the organic matter up is to change to try and bring the soil to life in those two stubble years. The experiment, we're now in about the third year of, of, of what will be a 10-year experiment. We took in readings of organic matter which were low, almost university on the arable. Mm. We've been putting waste tea bag product on it which is a sort of paper pulp and we put that on quite thick, almost a centimetre thick, yeah. putting as much chicken muck and farmyard manure on and we're chopping as much, so the rape home, instead of selling off the farm, we're chopping uh, any straw we're chopping if it's not suitable for making straw for bedding with. And if it is suitable for straw bedding, I'm using much more for my cattle who love it and they're eating some and having more comfy lying on the others. And then that all gets recycled and goes back on. Now, on this field we're standing on, they put a simple cover crop in, the principal one being fodder radish, but it's also have phacelia and various other things. I then graze the sheep across it. Um, what you're seeing now is, is a, a regeneration of it. It's done its good because it's got the worm population up, it's got the bacteria population up, it's taken in um, the remnants of, of the last wheat crop that were left there. This soil here was potatoes two seasons ago and then it had wheat after potatoes, then rape, and we've left all the rape home on the ground and we've min-tilled this crop of wheat into it, which will mature, obviously, in the summer. When you look at the handful of soil here, you, you can start to almost see the organic matter in. But I think more, more interestingly, you can see how it crumbles. And I'm, I'm loving this sort of crumbly thing because that's what's letting the water through. It used to pack down hard, almost like bricks. And so I'm really thrilled to see how it's crumbling up. This is breaking in lines, whereas before what we were looking at was much more crumbly. And if you did that, it was all crumbling apart and not breaking in blocks. And you can see looking in the pit, it's gone into little blocks there rather than lovely crumbs, friable crumbs. And what I would hope to aim for the next five years, and this will go in potatoes, so it won't improve next summer. But after that, when we start getting some paper on it, I'd like to see it coming friable and soft again, so that it's really pervious to the rainwater and it's really holding onto all the nutrients and easy for the roots to push down through. But I, I'm quite pleased about the roots. This is February. So we don't expect to see much of anything growing, and yet there is a good bite here for the, the sheep to come onto, and they'll enjoy that, and they'll fatten well onto it. So you've made quite a change here, introducing this within your sort of rotation. As a landlord, how did you come to those decisions? Was it in consultation with your tenant? You know, were you thinking more about the longevity of the estate? It was just useful for you, for you to sort of share some yeah, of your thoughts well, on that. The, the, the arable is all done on a contract farming agreement yeah. with, uh, with EC Drummond. And so Ben Drummond and I have meetings every quarter and sit down and discuss the way ahead. Um, we really decided that potato farming wasn't going to be sustainable if we went on, went on eroding at the rate we were. 
So it became obvious we had to do something and Ben suggested the paper waste and we started, because we had the cattle we thought we could up them and the cover crops were an obvious sequitur from that because we could graze the sheep. So having decided that the soil was worked out and needed some remedial attention, having got the records that showed us that our organic matter was low, it then became fairly obvious that we had the tools really very easily available to put it right and actually at a very low cost. And we were worried that we were just following a fad and a trend when we started, but at very low cost and really almost no cost, we've been able to start changing it. And what had surprised me is how quickly it started to turn around. I thought it would take 10 years, having taken 40 years to get in the poor state it was. I thought it'd take at least 10 years to get it back. And three years down the, the track, we're, we're seeing a huge difference already. And a lot of difference in the amount of wildlife. I mean, looking at this field here that's been a little bit poached and then recovered, you can see that in February, the poor month of the year, there's a bright green crop, there's food for mice, there's little bits of root and stuff, um, and that hopefully will get the owls back and, and the, the secondary predators. So it, it, it's a win for, for us farming the arable and it's a win for conservation. Mm -hmm.